All right, welcome to Pro Tools 101, exercise five. Let's just get right to it, shall we? <clears throat> so, exercise five, uh, as you'll see in the eBooks, is just like all the other exercises at the end of the lesson. So, lesson five, making your first audio recording. Before recording, preparing to record, recording and managing audio. This is a great chapter that talks about how to record in Pro Tools. At the end of that chapter, is exercise five. So here is what we're gonna do. <clears throat> Rear says that there are two options. Option one, live recording. If it's option, you'll be need to connect a microphone to your audio interface. Option two, bus recording. If you don't have live recording options, you can instead record from an existing bus in the starter session by routing the bus to the input of the VO track. Okay, so we're gonna do the live recording. And if there's time, we'll do the bus recording. So, live recording from my microphone, option one. So, open, let's see here. You'll start by opening the Pro Tools session that you created in exercise four. Uh, let's see, navigate to the session file that you created in exercise four. Okay, will do. So, in Pro Tools, file, open session. And the last thing I created was exercise four KT. And there it is. Might look familiar if you did exercise four. Okay. And then now it says choose file, save as, and name it exercise five, keeping the session inside the original session folder. Okay. Because we're doing exercise five now. So we need to label it as such. So file, save as. We'll call it exercise five. And as you can see, it is still in the Pro Tools session folder that I created, complete with the audio files folder, bounce files folder, clip groups folder, session file backups. I already have a few. And video files, don't have any yet. Hit save. Okay, now it's called exercise five KT. It says so right at the top of the session window. Okay. This is where we're gonna start to get a little technical. Um, and it really, it, it really needs you to have some technical knowledge as to how your system is set up. Macs are relatively simple. PCs are a little more difficult because it depends on what sort of sound card and microphone input you have and if it's as part of your sound car card or whatnot. Now, if you have a PC laptop from school or you're using the ASIO driver in the playback engine, which we talked about in the first class, um, this should work just fine. Okay, preparing to, but what I'm gonna show you today is how to do it on a Mac because I'm on a Mac. Preparing to record option one. Let's see, oh, well, first it says, toggle the display to the mix window by choosing window mix or the keyboard shortcut command equals or control equals if you're on a PC. All right, let's do that. This is the edit window. I'll go up to window, down to, oops, down to mix, and there's the shortcut. There it is right there. So as you can see, I've made four tracks and the mix window <clears throat> is starting to look like sort of a soundboard that you'd see at, a, at some sort of recording venue or, or a mixing studio. So you've got your faders here, they can move up and down. You've got your pan, if you wanna pan something to the left or pan something to the right. And as you can see, VO, drums, guitar, and master. And see, whatever I click in the, in the mix window shows up in the edit window as well as the tracks window. Okay. <clears throat> So, route the signal to the audio input of the VO track. Okay, if you're on a Mac, this is what I suggest you do. Go up to Setup, Playback Engine. Now, if you're on a Mac, and I believe this does it on PCs as well, but if you're on, but if you're on a PC, try it with the ASIO driver. If you're on a Mac, your playback engine up till now has probably been on built-in output. But think about what that name means, built-in output. 
output. Speakers, headphones, it's outputting audio. We want to input now. Playback engine that's built in output is not going to work because it's made to only output audio. So we could use built-in microphone. That could be good, but that's input only. That's microphone. What Pro Tools does when you install it on a Mac is it, it gives you something called the Pro Tools Aggregate Input and Output. That's what I-O means, input and output. And what that does is it, it's, it makes an aggregate or a combination of your built-in microphone and your output into one playback engine. I didn't say this before, <clears throat> to, before now because I thought it might have been too much info to give you, but at this point, if you're on a Mac, you want to switch your playback engine to Pro Tools Aggregate because this will allow you to both listen to what you're doing and to record output and input um, in Pro Tools. If you just have microphone or output selected, you're only going to be either hearing or, uh, or recording, outputting or inputting, not both. The aggregate lets you do both. And of course, this happens every time you do a playback engine change. It asks, it, it, it basically has to restart the session. While it's restarting, the ASIO driver on PCs is supposed to act like an aggregate. So that should work. So quick trivia question, hardware buffer size. I'm gonna be recording. I, I mentioned this in the last class. Do I want this to be a low sample size or a high sample size? low sample size. Hardware buffer affects the latency or the delay. So <clears throat> if I'm editing, the, it builds up a buffer. When I hit the play button, it, it quickly builds up a buffer and then plays. And then when it runs into something that's very complex, it's got that buffer and can play through that complexity. Um, if it's a low sample size, there is no buffer or a very tiny imperceptible buffer. So when it runs into something with a lot of effects or a lot of complexity, it just stops. It's like, there's no buffer here. I wasn't ready for this. When you're recording, you don't want a buffer. You don't want a delay. You don't want a lag. Because usually when vocalists, for example, are recording, they're singing, but they're hearing all of the tracks that have already been recorded to Pro Tools. So Pro Tools is playing all of the raw tracks while the singer is singing. And the last thing the singer needs is to be like a half second off because of the buffer. So we always keep our buffer size low when we're recording. So I'll just keep it at 32. And we're not dealing with the video yet, so I'm gonna keep that on, uh, I'm gonna keep that unchecked, but you could check it if you want. Boom, okay, great. Nothing seems different. So let's see what to do next. Well, in the mix window, we're gonna go into the input output area and look at the audio input path selector. As you can see, there's in the diagram here, it says IO, input and output. This first one is input. This second one is output. This tells Pro Tools what this track is doing with its input and output. So let's look. Mix or you can use the shortcut to get to the mix window. So we're gonna record my, a voice <clears throat> and uh, we're gonna record to the VO track, which stands for voiceover. So let's go up this uh, mix window. Each track has its own column. That's the difference between the mix window and the edit window. The edit window, everything is done left to right. Each track goes left to right in a row. In the mix window, each track goes up and down as a column because this is the way it is on a mixing board. You go like this and you look up, make some adjustments, and then you do some more mixing, that sort of a thing. So everything that's in this column right here affects the VO track. All of this stuff we're gonna get into in the coming weeks, so don't worry about it yet. Right now, we're just worried about the input and output path for voiceover. So. The first one is input. Let's click on that. Interface. So, <clears throat> um, it always says 
one and two because the Mac microphone is a stereo microphone. So uh, there are actually two, but Pro Tools sees it as a left and a right. Um, so it really doesn't matter which one you choose. It's still the Mac built-in microphone because the Mac built-in microphone is stereo. If you were using an interface with a microphone, I don't know if you can see it, microphone like this, you would only have one input. It would just see the one. Um, because this is the Mac microphone, it sees it as the left and the right because it's stereo. So they're both the same, just one's left and one's right. So I'm just gonna choose number one. That's letting this track know that the input signal is coming from the built-in microphone. And then when you click on the, the second row, this is your output. This is letting um, the track know where to output the audio. In other words, how are we gonna hear this? You're not gonna be touching this too much, except later on when we're sending and routing tracks to other tracks. Um, oops, my microphone just collapsed. There we go. Um, there we go. Um, so if you just want to hear audio out of your speaker, um, your output will say something like this. Built-in output 1-2. One, it should say LR left and right in my opinion, but it says 1-2 uh, stereo. Um, if I wanted just to output to the left speaker, I would choose output one. If I wanted to output just to the right speaker, I would choose output two. Uh, there's no reason for me to do that, so I'm just gonna keep it on stereo. Um, that's just what the max speakers are called. The built-in speakers are just called built-in output. So that's letting this track know to send the signal to the built-in output so we can hear it. So input, output. Okay. <clears throat> now we have to tell Pro Tools that we want to record. But as you can see, and we do that by record enabling the track by hitting this little button that looks just like a, a circle. So let me go back to the mix window. As you can see, each track has these buttons, an I, an S, an M, and this slightly faded red circle button. This track has it, this track has it. This track doesn't have it because this is the master fader track. We're gonna get into this later, but basically the master fader track is the last um, track on the chain. Everything feeds into that before it goes to your speakers. Um, so you can't record on it. It's kind of like it's kind of like it's kind of like a port that opens up and lets sound out. Um, you can't record on on, on that because it's technically not an audio track. It's a master fader track. So that's why you're not seeing this stuff. So which track do we want to record on? VO. So we record enable the VO track. If I wanted to, see now it's seeing my voice because I record enabled it. If I record enable the drums track, watch what happens. Hey, now I can record myself to these tracks. I can just record myself to these tracks too. And as you can see, each track is feeding into the master fader track. Oops, there we go. I turn, I turn off the record enable track, even though I've said um, input uh, microphone on this track. Uh, it doesn't, it's basically the microphone is not turned on until I hit record enable. And this is, as you can see, going out to this master fader before it goes out to the world, at, AKA my speakers. If I add this track, watch what happens to the master fader. One, two, one, two. See how it's louder? See how it's louder? Because I'm sending twice the signal to the master fader. See how the, 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 the levels go up? Watch what happens when I add the third one. Now I'm, now I'm sending the same signal, one, two, and three, to the master fader. The master fader is getting the signal, getting three tracks worth of signal, and as a result, it's overloading it because I'm sending it one, not one, not two, but not three. Imagine um, making a recipe and put in one pinch of cayenne pepper, 
put in two, oh, it's getting kind of hot. Put in three, okay, now that's really hot. It's basically adding more and more signal to the master fader track. When we get into mixing later, you'll see that this is how we can bring one down. You can bring this one down. And you can see how the master fader is going down because I brought the signals down. When I bring them up, as you can see, the master fader goes up. And now I'm getting feedback. So, let us not turn those on. And I hope you're also paying attention to the edit window as well because um, when I record enable a track, you'll see the edit window, the record enable button turns on there as well. So I don't need to be doing this in the mix window. I could do it in the edit window as well. These two windows are interchangeable. But for this, we're just doing the, the VO track. <clears throat> Test the input level by speaking to the microphone. Try using the first line of the voiceover script Summer's here, and it's time for some fun in the sun. Keep an eye on the track meter as you speak into the mic. If necessary, adjust the gain on your audio interface. This is key. I'll show you what I mean. This is my signal. As I talk, as you can see, the signal of this track has not changed. I go all the way up. The signal of this track has not changed. We'll get into the master fader later. We're just paying attention to the VO right now. That's because whenever you record this, and this is super important, whenever you record, these faders do not increase or decrease the power of the audio coming in. This on, These faders only control the mix of the audio that's already in Pro Tools. The audio is not in Pro Tools yet. Once it's in there, then these faders will start to work. But until they're in there, these faders don't do anything. So if this is a really hot signal, and it is, how do I make it less hot? I could step away from the mic. That's one thing I can do. But it also says, <clears throat> if necessary, adjust the gain of your audio on your interface. So if you're using an interface, like if you've got a mic plugged into a little box that's then going to your computer, it should have a gain knob on it, which will control the strength of this signal going into the computer. In this case, we're using the Mac microphone. So if you go up to Apple, System Preferences, Sound, Input. Okay, watch this. Let's go back into Pro Tools here. I'm actually gonna just use the, there we go. Watch what happens when I basically reduce the input volume, otherwise known as the gain volume in the input window in the system preferences. Watch this meter. One, two, three, 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 one, two, three. I'm adjusting the gain. I just adjusted the gain going into Pro Tools. Um, I, you can't do it here because this can only adjust the mix of the audio that is already in your timeline. Before it gets in there, you control the gain or the input signal of it. And what you want to do is, and hopefully you learned this in 9-1, you want this to be a hot signal but you don't want it to go up into the red. So what you do is you adjust this to, um, what I like to adjust it to is, I try to, to have it peak around negative six, which is right here. Um, that's because that gives me room to edit later on. I can add effects, which will make it louder. I could um, do different filters and, and make it louder. And I want a little bit of what we call headroom if I want to make it a little louder. If I make it as loud as possible without hitting the red, that'll sound good. But A, I'm in danger of hitting the red in case my voice spikes when I'm talking. And it doesn't give me any flexibility in the mix to add effects. So the industry standard pretty much uh, when you're recording a voice is to have it peak between negative 12 and negative 6. 
So I'm going to be looking at negative six, the absolute peak of my voice when I'm recording this. So, mic check. One, two, three. Let's bring this down. One, two, three. One, two, three. That's looking pretty good. Okay, I've set my levels. I'm ready to record. Summer's here, and it's time for some fun in the sun. That is the line I need to repeat, I guess. Oh, this is the whole thing right here. Ah, it's important that you do this because this is a project or session you're going to be building throughout this semester. So I'm going to keep this window open. And I'm going to shrink this window a little bit. Practice, practice, practice. This is a 30 second radio spot. So the whole point is practice this a few times to keep it under 30 seconds. The goal is to keep it at 27 to 30 seconds. So practice this script over and over again until you get it basically between 27 and 30 seconds in length. And what I find is once the record track is enabled, I like to open up the transport window. And then when I'm ready to record, I'll hit the play button. I'll hit the record button and then I'll hit the play button to start it. So let's go ahead and do that. Window. Oh, first I need to find the script again. There it is right here. This is the script. Okay. Window. Transport. Here is the transport window. We learned about this before. This is our counter. This is our sub counter. This shows us where the cursor is. Uh, we don't really want our cursor there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my edit window. See, and you can see this is where the cursor is. I'm placing it around different spots of the timeline. And as you can see, either in this counter or in this counter, it's the same counter. It's just its own floating window. Um, it's showing me where the cursor is being set. Keyboard shortcut. If you want to go back to the beginning of your timeline, rather than trying to click and just get it right there with your mouse, which is nearly impossible, hit the return or enter key. As you can see, it's gone back there. I'm back to zero. Great. So let's go back to the mix window. My counter's at zero. I am record enabled. Hit the record button. Not recording yet until I hit the play button. So let's go. I haven't practiced this, but you guys should. Summer's here, and it's time for some fun in the sun. But don't let the... Ah, let's do that again, shall we? You're going to probably do this a lot. And you can do just what I did. Summer's here, and it's time for some fun in the sun. But don't hit the dunes unprepared. Spicoli Surf Shop has the coolest beach gear so you don't get baked by the sun. Our gnarly accessories include swimming apparel, sunblock, boogie boards, flip-flops, and oversized beach towels with sand-free technology. So keep the sand at the beach and the waves within reach. Stop by Spicoli Surf Shop today. So I don't know if you could tell, I was looking at the clock that entire time and I could see that I was speaking kind of fast. So I slowed it down at the end. And when I said today, that's when I hit the 27 second mark. So once you do that, let's see what it says to do next. Let's go do our edit window. Oh, look at that. Looks like the uh, thing right there. Now you could also do this with the edit window open. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to go to the drums track and I'm just going to put the cursor right here. The drums, I've turned off record enable on VO. I've turned on the drum track record enable. Now I'm just in the edit window now, but I still have all the same controls. Transport window, which I got from the window sub menu. I hit record, I hit play, watch where it starts from, and watch how it records my waveforms. 
Harley accessories include swimming apparel, sunblock, boogie boards, flip flops. You should be able to hear the actual the old recording because, because it's playing the the beach and uh, what's, what's going on in track one stop, while I'm recording in track today. two. And as you can see, my voice is being recorded to track two. Watch, I'm going to do something loud and you'll see the waveform. Hey! 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 See that? So, and then if I want to do something in track three, I could undo this record enable, turn on this record enable, maybe hit return to go back to zero, hit record, hit play. Summer's here and it's time for some- And I'm hearing what I did in track one while I'm recording in track three, the guitar track. And soon you'll hear what I did in track one and track two in just a second. Swimming apparel, sunblock, boogie boards, flip flops, and you shouldn't be able to hear the actual the old recording technology. because it's so crazy, huh? The beach and the uh, what? Now we don't want to do all this. I'm just sort of showing you how it is in the studio. Um, Usually the guitarist will record their licks, the drums will record, other instruments record, and then the singer will come in and and they'll okay, okay, go. And then they'll basically hit record just like we did before just like we did now. And the singer will be able to hear all the other tracks while they're singing. As you can see, this comes in really handy when you're trying to create a soundtrack yourself at home. Oh yeah, and here's the stop button. Oh, I need to unenable that. There we go. So let's go ahead and get rid of these because I don't want them. You could take your selector tool, highlight them like this and hit the delete key or take your grabber tool. Just click once on it to hit the whole thing and grab it. The whole point of this assignment is just to do this one and we did it. So let's see what's next in the ebook. Okay, bus recording from a starter session. So this is how, everything we did up to now is recording from a microphone into your computer. Now we're going to do something called bus recording. If you don't have a microphone, but you have uh, an audio track on your computer, you can record that track. You record, I'm sorry, you're gonna record that file to an audio track using the exact same thing we just did. So let's see how they say to do it. Okay, so first, if you've done it, done this this far, save it, and you've already saved as exercise five, save it. And then what I would do is take a picture of it, and we're good. If you want to continue, um, uh, I would highly suggest it, but you, but uh, you don't need to submit this next bit unless you are unable to do a recording. If you're unable to do a recording, then do this next bit and send me a picture of that uh, completion. So we're gonna go ahead and close this session because we're gonna do now option two, bus recording. So open session, uh, we want in the ex want to go into the, the media folder Exercise a media folder <clears throat> to exercise five, recording exercise starter. Okay, so I will call this um, exercise five alternate with my initials. So in this one, uh, I have this from, yours probably doesn't look like this, uh, because I used this last year, and this is actually my voice. So I am going to just delete this. Uh, you should not have that on your computer. If you do, that'd be crazy. But if you do, just do what I just did. <laughs> okay, what did we learn before? We got the clip window here. As you can see, there are two clips in here already. The one that I just recorded and deleted, and then this one called XYZ, right? What's missing over here? our tracks. So you hit this little button right here. Now we have our tracks window. And just like any good program, when you hover your mouse over the edge of these like windows, 
you use you will get this little arrow that lets you know you can expand it or collapse it a little bit. I want to expand it a little bit because I want to see the names of the tracks. I want to see the names of the clips. There we go. And you can adjust this as much as you want. If you're not seeing this right here, don't worry about it. Uh, we'll talk about it in the future. But if you do want it to look like my window, best thing to do is to go up to view, edit window views. And what I'm looking at are the inserts A and E and the input output. See? There you go. And then we haven't gotten to this yet, but this is where we put in effects and stuff, but we're not there yet. Okay, so let's see what it says to do next. Locate the audio input path selector for the VO track. Same thing as before. Except this time, we want the input path selector to be a bus. And the bus is called Scratch VoiceOver to record the voiceover from existing audio included in the session. So sometimes you'll have um, audio uh, on a hidden track right here. There's a track that says Hidden VO. If you right click on that and say Show, you'll see there's a track here. But this track, uh, let's see what it sounds like. Oops. As you can see, look at, the, you're not hearing anything. Why are you not hearing anything? Look at the input and the output. This is the input, this is the output. The output is Scratch VO. This is getting a little advanced, but we're gonna be talking about this later. This is what we call a bus. So if I've got audio on a track and I wanna, and I want to record it onto another track, I can get this to this by putting it on a bus. And the bus is how you get a signal from one track to another track. So instead of choosing built-in microphone, I'll choose bus. And as you can see, there is a bus called Scratch VO. So what we're doing is we're going to be taking this track and it's going to be output on a bus called Scratch VO. And this track is going to get its input signal from a bus called Scratch VO. In other words, this bus is heading out of the bus depot and going to this input, which is called Scratch VO. So we're linking this output called Scratch VO right down here to this input called Scratch VO. And that is how we're going to record this signal onto this track. So once we're doing that, and that's how these tracks work, whatever we tell it its input is, that is where the signal is gonna be recorded from. So by telling this track that the input is um, Scratch VO, that's letting it know that wherever the out, if there's an output called Scratch VO, then that is the signal that's going to be sent to this input called Scratch VO. So I'll use the uh, return key to make sure that I'm at zero. I record enable the track, open up my transport window, make sure I'm at zero, hit record, and hit play and watch what happens. Summer's here and it's time for some fun in the sun. But don't hit the dunes unprepared. Spicoli's Surf Shop has the coolest beach gear so you don't get baked by the sun. Our gnarly accessories include swim it is apparel, literally sunblock, taking boards, the track tops, and, oversized and beach recording it onto another technology. track by sending so it out the of this the bus the called Scratch VO reach. Stop and this track Spicoli knows where it's to, to where to get the signal from. And until I hit stop, it's just going to keep on recording. <laughs> so I hit stop and it's done. And as you can see, it's the exact same uh, audio file. 
Um, there are reasons to do it like this. Uh, we'll get into later. It has to do with routing. It has to do with, um, um, you know, uh, sometimes you want a copy of a track so you can add effects to it, but keep the, your raw track um, pristine. Um, there's also copying and pasting, obviously, but there are reasons to do it this way as well. A lot of times what people do is they'll have multiple tracks, drums, guitars, keyboards, another drum set, vocals, and they just want to do like a rough mix. So what they'll do is they'll basically go to all of their buses and set them to scratch VO or whatever they, this is a custom name. You could name it whatever you want. And then they go to the track that they want to record to make sure that has the same bus name. That way the buses are talking to each other. Um, think about it as a bus going from, from point A to point B, but it can only go from point A to point B if it knows where it's going. It knows where it's going if it's the same name, Scratch VO in this case. Um, a lot of times what you'll do is you can basically bus all of your tracks or route, busing and routing are the same thing, busing all of your tracks into another track hit record enable and record and what that does is Summer's here and it's it time records, for some fun in the sun. uh basically but all of your tracks into another track Spagoli and you can listen to it as it's happening year, so and determine this is a good mix uh that's not, oh, not such a good mix but let's let it play out sunblock, i'll hand it to my bandmates boards, see what they think um, so there is a reason to record this way so through the bus the method the beach and the waves within reach Stop by Spicoli's Surf Shop today. And as you can see, I bust all of these tracks to this one here. Um, let me do this. Let me record something to this one. Okay, let's do this. Okay, I'm going to just record my voice. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's time, time to dance in the and romance. Don't hit the dunes and that's. I guess I wanted to live in the disco age. So now look at this. I am setting the bus of hidden vo to go to sc the output of hidden vo to bus to scratch vo. I am taking the drum track and sending that through the output bus known as scratch vo. And again, I am going to re-record onto the VO track, track number one, and it's going to get its input from the bus known as Scratch VO. So I'll be outputting from here and inputting here, but I've added this. Watch what happens. Go back to the beginning. Record, enable the VO track. Record, play, watch, and listen. Hey, what's Summer's up, everybody? Here and it's time, time for some fun in the sun. But don't hit the dunes unprepared. There you go. And now, let's play that. I'll solo it so we just hear that only. Hey, what's Summer's up, everybody? Summer's here and it's time, time for dance. some fun in the sun. But don't hit the dunes So I just recorded these two tracks through the bus method. Okay. This was a long one. Uh, we're going to have plenty of long ones, so I hope you uh, will carve out some time. This is a complicated class, but it's very rewarding if you stick it through. So what I would say is uh, if you did this method, go ahead and save it. Take a screenshot, send it to me. Boom, exercise five. If you did it the other way, that's cool too. Hopefully you took a screenshot of that. Send it to me, exercise five. You were done for the week. <laughs>